So uh, your seat good? Get the mirrors all adjusted so you can see everything okay? Just stay off the freeways, all right? I don't want you going out on those yet. Just leave your phone in your purse. I don't want you texting. Okay? Daddy, okay. Okay. There you go. Be careful. Thanks, Dad. Call me, but not while you're driving. We knew this day was coming. That's why we bought a Subaru. Good morning and welcome to Radio Friends. This is Wednesday, September the 17th, and we've got almost a, a, a little reunion today, I guess you could say. Rebecca Johnson, good to have you here. Hi, Paul. Thank uh, you. And you brought along a special guest. Now, he was here back in, actually, two special guests. Yes. They were here in July. Yes. But since they were on Radio Friends in July, something happened, right? Something wonderful happened. Yeah. Why don't you introduce our guest? Here? I'm happy to introduce uh, retired Colonel Mike Fayette. Welcome back to Radio Thanks, Friends, Paul. Mike. Thank you very much. And, and you're his best, one of your whiskey. best buddies. Yeah. yeah. This is Whiskey. Whiskey the dog. Whiskey and the dog. you got to go to kbia.org, click on Radio Friends, and watch this segment. Now, Whiskey the dog is a service dog That's for correct. you, Mike. He is, yes. How did, how did you come about to uh, acquire Whiskey? Well, there's a great organization right here in Columbia, Missouri called Reach Eye. It's a research center for human-animal interaction. And just so happens, Dr. Rebecca Johnson directs that organization. And so that organization adopts animals from shelters, rescues the animal, trains them, and then gives them to veterans, thus rescuing veterans. Mm -hmm. So Whiskey... Well, whiskey knows we're talking whiskey about. Whiskey knows too. exactly. He's a very smart, smart and intuitive uh, guy. Um, so, Arichai uh, presented whiskey to me. We trained together a little while, and then um, about a month ago, he officially became mine and entered my household as a full-time family member. Yeah. And now he accompanies me twenty. Every place you go. Yes, sir. And he is a certified service dog. Yes, then, he is. Right? Whiskey is a service dog. You know, under the Americans with Disabilities Act, Paul, uh, a service dog is one that is specially trained to perform tasks for its person. Mm -hmm. So Whiskey was specially trained in our training program, which is called Veterans and Shelter Dogs. He started his training, was trained by a veteran, and then we finished off his training, uh, and he has specific skills that he does for his person. Okay, what are some of the specific skills? Well, he did something that Rebecca, or Dr. Johnson noticed earlier. He was leaning into me. I have a um, uh, weakness uh, that affects my mobility and stability, and so Whiskey will sometimes lean into me on my weak side. He, he knows that that's your weak side. He does. And he can sense if you're having a problem. Absolutely. And he will come and lean into you to give you support. Absolutely. He will often know if I'm having a particularly tough day, uh, perhaps even a day where I'm having difficulty even getting out of bed, he will do things to help. He will uh, stand firm, and I can use him much like a cane to kind of help push off to stand. Now, do you have to tell him this, no. or does he, he knows it? He knows it, absolutely, yeah. yeah. He, he is so in tune with you. He is, literally, uh, he watches me no matter what. He, if I move, he's got to be within eye shot of me, and if he's not, he'll find a position to watch me. And you were telling me before we came on, when you back out of the driveway in your car, yeah. he looks to the right and looks to the left just as you do to make sure that there are no cars coming. And my wife drives majority of the time. She's also my full-time caregiver. And so we both kind of, you know, habitually look left and right, and that's exactly what he'll do <laughs> as well. And so it's funny to watch him do that. But he, in addition to that, he, he has mirrored a lot of the things that we do. Um, I uh, will often... Um, check the locks on my house at night to make sure we're all locked up and secure. And oftentimes he will be tracing that route before I get to it. And he's already doing his patrolling perimeter wow. before I do it. Uh, those, are, those are beautiful stories. Rebecca, I want you to share, you told me it was very emotional when 
you officially turned whiskey over to Mike. Right, when we <clears throat> handed the lead to Mike with, you know, a ceremonial handoff, uh, some of the members from Mike's unit, the 101st Airborne, came, and they made me an honorary Screaming Eagle. Oh, so you're a Screaming Eagle now. I'm a Screaming Eagle. Yeah, there <laughs> okay. were people who would say I always was a Screaming Eagle, but no, um, it was, I'm an honorary Screaming Eagle, and it was the uh, biggest honor of my career. Yeah. And then uh, Mike gave me his coin from when he came back from Iraq. And that was an incredibly profound and honoring experience. It was just yeah. remarkable. Well, what you're doing is having a profound effect on Mike Absolutely. and people like Mike. Absolutely. And whiskey. Here, whiskey was basically a throwaway dog. Yes, he was at the Central Missouri Humane Society. Yes, yes. Whiskey was an, an unwanted dog who had no place to go. And what a gem, the fact that he was rescued and he is now living in a loving home and he is performing a very important duty. Absolutely. Yeah. That's right. And, you know, when we were training Whiskey, uh, we realized we probably created a little bit of a monster because one of the things we wanted him to do is to pick up objects for mm -hmm. Mike. And so we got to a point where when we were in Panera with Whiskey, he would look at a napkin, look at me, look at the napkin, look back at me, saying, please, can I get it? Can I get it? <laughs> and so he was regularly going around and picking up the napkins at Panera um, <laughs> Because he learned his skill so very well and wanted to do this, you know. Absolutely. He was picking up other people's napkins or were people? Yes. Oh, okay. And, well, whiskey. And, and he yeah. picked up a hat. Someone dropped. He looked at the hat, looked at me, dying to pick the hat up. I said, get it. He picked up the hat and um, put it on the chair next to the man. Very good. Very good. <laughs> if people want more information about this program, Rebecca, what can they do? The best thing to do would be to phone our office. We are located, at, we're the Research Center for Human-Animal Interaction. We're located at the College of Veterinary Medicine, and the number there is 882-2266. Okay, and Mike, in wrapping, uh, in wrapping this up today, what do you want to say? I want to say that uh, Rebecca and her team are literally not just saving dogs, but saving lives. He's a, he's a lifesaver. He's changed my life, changed my family's life, and made life easier for us. Mm -hmm. So um, he's better than any medicine. Right. Yeah. He, you know, and, and animals have a very, very special connection to us humans if we will just let uh, tune in to them. They're tuned in to us. We need to tune in to them. That's right. Thank That's you so right. much. Yes. Thank Dr. You, Rebecca Paul. Johnson and Mike Cat, thank Thanks, you so much for thank coming. You. And Whiskey, thank you. Pleasure having you here. We're out of time for today, tomorrow, the OSHA Book Talks and Crop Walk and 5K. Our program directed by Travis McMillan, Reynolds Journalism Institute. Audio is Pat Akers from KBIA. Our floor director is Lowell Thomas and our assistant producer and guest coordinator, Uncle James Mauser. Drop me an email, pepperp, Missouri.edu. Bye-bye.